because okay yeah so it's different because like okay so you you can draw something right yeah it's just what the when you paint it it comes to light mm. like you know so that's where like you can experiment with colors and shadows and you know if you want the painting to look a little rough on a business in the city come to the way no time a big really come to the way you got a message for the people come to the way you could be black white red blue come to the way it's all love we want to meet you come to the way show come to the way show come to the way show hello my name is jamal smith and i want to welcome you guys back to the wave show shout out to our our, our, our new viewers tuning in and don't forget hit the subscribe button in the bottom because we got tons of content and good quality people coming through like the one we have today so i'm going to give her a chance to introduce herself her name my name is shay well actually my name is shinoi but i go by shay nice so shay <laughs> shinoi you guys are going to get a chance to hear from her she's a painter in our com in our community very phenomenal work and you know we're just going to get a chance to get to know her so shinoi let's give a call you shinoi yeah, it's okay. All right, so Shinoi, let me ask you, where's your background? Where are you from? What was it like growing up in the city? Talk a little bit about that. Okay, so i um, born in Canada. Um, my parents are from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, so I only lived in Toronto for a little bit, and then I moved to Brampton. Oh, okay. And oh, then, go, you sorry. moved to Brampton? Go yeah, on. I moved to Brampton when I was like maybe in grade one. Mm -hmm. And then... I'm in Innisfil now. So I just jumped, so it's way different. Drastic, right? Yeah. I mean, Brampton, Innisfil. I mean, minus the distance, right? I mean, yeah. the whole setup is different, right? You said there's a lot of trails out there or a lot of, like, local yeah. walking you can so do? so basically all of Innisfil is farmland. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, like, so much different properties, yeah. and the properties are so nice. But there's, like, just a lot of horses. Even, like, you can get, like, organic eggs. From like down the street organic so, meaning yeah. like from a, a chicken itself yeah not manufactured no, i love no. that okay and like you can actually help yourself as in like they don't have anyone there mm -hmm. for you like you know like you don't pay with debit card or anything you have to put your money in like a bin wow and you just because they really like that community they really help everyone out and they're so involved yeah yeah and it's almost like we're missing that, right? Like, yeah. I remember my mom telling me, like, before, you can pass by the house, get food, the whole night. Nowadays, you don't want nobody coming over, <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's a big thing. So I want to dive right into the painting because, I mean, yeah. the work that you've done, beautiful. So Thank where you. did the passion from painting come from? Okay, so I know, like, I went to... So in high school, I did take, like, a couple of painting classes. Mm -hmm. And then after that... Um, I just, I just went, I just stopped painting after that or started, I stopped drawing okay. only because it made me very frustrated and like, say like I'm drawing something and I can't get it right. I'll have like a panic attack wow. that I can't get it right. So that, that's where, that's when like, you know, I found out about my anxiety and everything. Yeah. So how, cause I didn't know exactly what was going on, but like now I have a better understanding about my, how my, how like. How I can cope with my anxiety as well, like mm. you know, so that really helps with my painting too. Um, sorry, I forgot the question. No, that's dope. That's dope, and and, and that's the that's the perspective yeah. that that we're kind of looking for. But it also kind of stems around the path. Like I was asking about the passion. Yeah. And okay. looking at the passion, so it started for you in high school, or was it a little bit before high school? Okay, so maybe before like maybe in elementary school because i did do a mural for my school Whoa. like on tiles really? and they have it like up in the in the, in the middle school and this yeah. is you in like your rookie days yeah. not sure about your talent yeah and you had the confidence to go out there and, and create a mural for your school yeah it was actually like a contest but like not really not 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 that much people were like very interested in it but like i was like i'm gonna take it on so i showed them my work and they were like that's sick they're like okay so like you're gonna do the mural for me so i was like okay cool <laughs> So Voluntold. Yeah. <laughs> they voluntold you to do the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. But again, sometimes you need to jump out into situations that might be uncomfortable. Yeah. So you true. can grow, right? Yeah. And even looking at the paintings, I mean, for you, like, what inspires you around? So even just to go back, let me hold on. So going back to that, the passion. Yeah. It kind of started doing the mirror, going through the whole high school process, and then yeah. landing us to where we are right now. Yeah, because, okay. yeah, I took more, like, I started getting interested in it more. Mm. And then, um, 
so around Easter time last year, my mom came home. She's like, because we just moved, right? Yeah. She's like, she's not going to buy any artwork from anywhere. So she was like, okay, so we're going to make our own art. So she walked to the dollar store, and she came home with canvases. Wow. And she's like, yeah, you're going to do your own art. So I wasn't even paying her no mind because I was like, I'm not going <laughs> to do that. It's your mom. Right? You yeah. know, you've heard this already. I don't know what type of art she was talking about. Yeah. So I was like, mom, can I try something? She was like, yeah, sure. So I took an 18 by 24, and that's when I did melanin. Wow. And I did the full body. And I was like, and then so by the time, like, okay, so I, I drew it, right? And then by the next day, I said, okay, I'm going to paint it because I got some paints from the dollar store. Yeah. And she went for a walk and she came back and she's like, you're wicked, Shay. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, mom, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I just, I just wanted to try something, like, you know? And it was, that's after that, I realized that I could paint because I never, like, I never liked to paint or color in things. So it was crazy. And that's a big point because a lot of times, right, we need someone yeah. to believe in us, right? We need someone to sometimes see things that we can't see for ourselves. Yeah. And how much belief and confidence did that instill in you just by your mom taking the initiative to get the canvas mm -hmm. without you even knowing and then looking at the artwork and saying, wow, like, Shay, this is beautiful. Yeah, and then after that, she posted on WhatsApp and that's how I got, like, my first order. Wow. Yeah. So someone took it serious. Yeah, like, at first I was just playing around. I didn't, like... I didn't expect it. I didn't expect to turn it into a business because mm. I was just playing around. Because you know, art is complex. You know, for certain people, like for some people, you know, because some people can just draw anything, and then it's like you see it and it looks like a line, but then it's not a line. Yeah. You know, and then you know it also takes time, so it's not like something that you have to rush with. You know, yeah. so that's why I didn't really like. I didn't really want to turn it into a business because like it's like pressure. You know, mm. and then you have to make sure you got to get it the same way how you made the same painting. Yeah. And like with mixing colors, too, it's a little bit difficult because you don't know how much of what color you put into one color. Right. So it was hard, like um, replicating uh, like the painting itself. And, and that's a real concern. Right. I don't know if you heard of someone called Basquiat. Yeah. Right. I, I think it's Basquiat. I'm pronouncing it right or yeah. wrong. But he was somebody who would be painted beautiful paintings long before the money came in. Yeah. Right? At the moment the money came in, it was like, I don't know if I could paint the same anymore. But you mm -hmm. were in a moment similar to that because you're like, okay, look, I don't want to turn into a business. I just want to do the whole free art thing and, and figure it out. And then you've seen the value of the business side of it. Yeah. Right? Well, my mom. Your mom seen yeah, the... Yeah, So again, mom. but sometimes you need that, right? Because yeah. your mom... Because think about it. You were what... How old were you when you, when you kind of got around to the painting idea? I was just like 20, yeah. You were 20? Yeah. So again, 20 years old, you don't know much about business. Yeah. But mom does. Yeah. And mom's seen the vision. Yeah. That's powerful. So the next question that I want to ask is, you know, who kind of inspired you around painting? Where, was the, where did the inspiration come from? Um, I didn't really look at, like, I never really looked at any other artist's paintings or anything. Like, if I'm looking, like, I'll probably just look at something and be like, that's really pretty, and, like, I want to try that, like, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's where, like, I have experimented with not only, like, landscape paintings, but abstract art, pouring acrylic paint, wow. epoxy resin art, because I seen a lot of them, and I was like, this is so crazy, I have to try it. <laughs> I, like, I would just try it. And they would come out, like, really nice. Yeah. Really nice, yeah. That, that's nice. And and even looking at the inspiration side of it, too. Because mm -hmm. you sound very knowledgeable about what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's good. Because, you know, you want to go to someone competent, right? Yeah. <laughs> but even looking at other inspirations, like, I, I, from what I understand, is it your dad also that paints? or? Yeah, he paints. Well, no, he doesn't paint. He draws. Oh. He's so, more so what's the difference around that? Painting versus drawing? Is, okay, yeah, so it's different because, like, okay, so you, you can draw something, right? Yeah. It's just what the when you paint it, it comes to life, mm. like, you know? So that's where, like, you can experiment with colors and shadows and, you know, if you want the painting to look a little rough, yeah. right? Or some people want, you know, the paint to be smooth, as in, like, the strokes of the painting would just be neat. Like, you don't want no shadow, no shiny, no nothing, right? So I guess it was a little bit different because he would, like, give me something to, like, he draw it. I'll, I'll paint it. Mm -hmm. But it's different because I'm looking at the painting and I'm not looking at the colors, right, of, like, right. the original. I'm just making the colors as I go and I'm thinking, like, okay, so 
it's I'm going to place this here. I'm going to place this here, right? So he gives me the drawing. So it's different, right? Because the way he will visualize it, because he's not painting, it would be different from like me painting it. Because then I'm adding what I think it should look like. I love that. And, and that's good, right? Yeah. Because because you, most people don't understand the difference. And I'll be honest with you. like I was probably on the loop with that question <laughs> too, right? But even looking at... Um, at your dad, you said he does the drawing. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your that your dad's drawing and, and what does he do with it and, and how it kind of impacted your painting. Okay, so um, he has done some roses. Like he is so sick with roses. Mm -hmm. I I don't like flowers. I don't like drawing flowers, but he has done some of those and um, he also does framing. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. So okay, so at the beginning. Because he seen me draw, like I would draw like six paintings, yeah. six drawings a night. Like I would stay up until like really? twelve. Yeah, and then the next day I'll get up so early just to paint at the table. Back at it again. Yeah, so it was like he seen me do it, and then he was like, "I can show you, I can draw." Hey. And then that's when he, <laughs> he, he drew something on this, um, this board, and it was just a person. Then he's like, and then he said he can draw from a long time, but I didn't know he can draw. <laughs> you didn't think I'm serious? Again, it's just parents talking, right? <laughs> yeah. And then after that, he got some, like, at work, he would print out, like, you know, mm. reference, like, whatever he wanted to draw. Yeah. And then he came home. I bought so much canvases, and he would just take them to work and come back home with, like, six drawings. And then that pushed me because I would have to paint them right because yeah. he's not painting them i like that so i would have to he would come home with six i had to paint them he's waiting for me to paint them and then either he would frame them or you know i would like varnish them after but and what did that do for your inventory of paintings right oh i have that's, a lot you see what i mean yeah. that's coming home with six every day you're knocking out six paintings every day and doing yeah. it all again yeah that's a big deal is there anybody else besides your dad that inspires you along the way my mom. Your mom? Yeah. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Because I think that's a huge inspiration. As, as yeah, as she saying, kept right? on pushing me. And she even registered the business. I didn't oh, do it. Oh, so she did the registration also. Yeah, she pushed me. She's like, Shay, we're going to register it right now. I was like, what? <laughs> so I was like, okay. And then I registered. And it's under. It's actually registered under Shay's and Harris's designs. Mm. But then I changed it up. And I changed it to SM Black Art. Okay, so you yeah. kind of put your own yeah. taste and spin on it. Yeah. And that's good because your mom started it for you, right? Yeah. And then she passed the baton. Yeah. And sometimes in passing the baton, our job is just to carry it and keep running. Yeah. Especially if the foundation is already set for us, right? And even looking at, like, your first painting. Yeah. Right, let me ask you, what was it like painting your very first portrait? I was excited. Really? Yeah, because I didn't know that I could execute something, like, so beautiful, like, you know? Because even, like, mixing the colors, you know, doing the skin tone? Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just playing around. I, like, before, like, I have painted, like, before, but I did not understand paints and different colors mm. and different, um, different colors that I can get within paintings. Um, so when I did Melanin, which is my first painting... I, it was crazy. I mixed it with brown, red, yellow, orange, because you want to get different skin tones. Like, you know, you want, if you want caramel, you add some yellow, hey, some orange, like, like you know? So it was really cool, and some red, and also, like, depending how the body is, if you're doing a body painting, you want to get, you know, like, collarbone, you know, some different shadings to show um, the lines on the body. These are yeah. good techniques. Yeah. These are really good techniques. And and looking at your first painting, what's interesting is how old were you again when you recognized that you had anxiety? Oh my gosh, I think it was like twenty. You were and about twenty. Yeah. And and also looking at when did you do your first painting? In the same time, like same after, time. yeah. After. So think yeah. about that. It's your first time painting and it's not anxiety you're feeling. It's excitement. Oh, yeah, I was so excited. And how did that excitement carry you through to like get the right painting done or just to kind of feel like you've accomplished something once you were done i guess after i don't i guess like i don't know i guess like it showed me to like um wait wait can you rephrase the question yeah sure yeah. so pretty much it was around the idea of of you know feeling anxiety versus the excitement yeah and then still pushing through and creating 
And what was it like when you when you created it, mm -hmm. and you felt like you accomplished something? Okay. Okay. So, so during that process, right, my anxiety just disappears. Mm. So it just I'm not thinking. My belly's not hurting me, right? So I'm not thinking about it. It's just focused on executing the painting, right? Because yeah. as you go, like, have you watched like those um, painting time lapse videos? Yes. And it's so, so cool, cool right? Yeah. yeah, I do some of them, right? So. I just love the fact that like the way, depending like the painting could take like an hour or two hours, right? Yeah. But then the way you edit the video, right? You, you highlight it, right? To each changing point of like, if I'm adding a new color or mm. I'm adding a detail, right? And then it just brings everything together and it's like so cool. But yeah, so as, I, as you start doing the painting and you start seeing how, how you visualize it to yeah. go, it just falls, everything falls together. That's so nice. And, and I want you to talk a little bit more about, you know, what does painting do for you? Mm -hmm. Because anxiety with painting mm -hmm. can actually have a little bit of leverage. Yeah. Right? So what's that like, you know, using painting as a tool to kind of, you know, as a, as a de-stressor, it being therapeutic? Yeah, yeah, it is actually really therapeutic. Um, oh, so... My mom, well, my family is going to be opening a faith, like a disability treatment center nice. called Faith Disability Treatment Center. Okay. And I will be teaching art therapy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I find that really exciting because I just want other, I want people to experience like what I experience when I take, you know, a brush to a canvas. Like, you know. And, and I want you to dive into that a little bit more. What do you experience and, and what does it do for the anxiety? Just kind of dive a little bit more into that. Okay. So it's calming. Mm. It's therapeutic because, you know, either like I'm listening to music because some people listen to music while they paint. It kind of calms them, too. Mm. So that kind of puts you in the mood. Right. So you're not really thinking about like what you have going on. You're, you're fo all your focus is on the painting. Right. Right. So I just want to create that space for people. And it's a space that I feel is, is so necessary to create. Yeah. Right? Because sometimes it's nice just to take your mind off of your daily stressors, right? Yeah. And I, and I, kinda, I was going to ask you how long have you been painting, but you kind of answered that too. For you, you know, how long does it take for you to actually create an artwork? How long? Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess it depends on the painting, right? Because mm. if the painting is very complex, it will take, you know like a uh, longer certain time right yeah. and it also depends how big the canvas is too because i have oh my dad makes canvases too yeah yeah like we bought the paper oh, off of it's so Amazon. much easier for you to paint when you have you know a lot of support around you like that yeah so yeah. you're saying he bought the the, the canvases he, he bought the paper the cloth okay. right so we have a big cloth and he just frames it so okay so in a, my basement that's where i paint I used to paint at the kitchen table. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. You got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then um, my mom said, you need to move downstairs for now. And so we have two sections. We have his uh, saw work, so where he makes the frames and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I have my art section, where I have an art table and all my art supplies and everything. Mm. So um, That's a studio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for now, you know, it needs some work, but you know, it's it's nice. I like it. So it's very organized, and I have all my materials and everything. Um, yeah, I think so. I don't know if I answered your question. No, you're doing fine. Um, okay. And it's just understanding, like, because some people think, you know, you have to go out there, you have yeah. to get a whole production, yeah. and here you are in your basement, yeah. right, starting something. And again, we're going to showcase some of your paintings, but, mm -hmm. like, to know you created that in your basement... It's almost like, that's not fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? We have people that spend money elsewhere and they still, you know, are still working on their skills, we'll say. Right? So the next question I want to ask is, you know, can you give us a little bit more about the process of creating your paintings? What's it like creating it, being in that right space? And, you know, do you, do you have to see an image? Or, or do you, you kind of just pull from your, your mental? I think you kind of answered that, but elaborate yeah. on it. Okay, so... Um I can see an image because I'm, I'm visual. Mm -hmm. So I can look off the image and then remake it. Mm. Yeah. So then that's like the whole sketch process. And I make sure like I use a ruler. 
Okay. Just to make sure, you know, I'm equal. Like, you know, you want so you want the painting either, depends on what the painting is. You want it to be in the center. Yeah. It will kind of look off if it's like to the side or like. <laughs> I like that. You know? It's always the small things, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm very precise. Like, even if there's a, there's an area on the painting and it does not look the same as the other area, yeah. I would want it to, I'll try to replicate the same area, depending on what it is. Though. If it's like just a background, an abstract background, yeah. I'll put anything there. Anything? Yeah. No, and do you have a specific color that you like to use or a scheme that you like to work with? Um, I love rainbow. The rainbow. Yeah. Yeah, that's why my logo has like all rainbow oh, stuff on it. Oh, and what is it about the rainbow? Is it just calming or? Oh, um, it's God's promise. I like that. Yeah. So say it again. God's promise. It's God's promise. Yeah. So talk about that. What, what's How does your logo kind of tie into God's promise? <laughs> I don't even know. I just loved it. I, I loved it and I just put it together and I was like, my mom's like, you know, every time she's talking, she talks about me. She's like, yeah, her logo is like God's promise. And I'm like, yeah, mom. <laughs> I just love it. But almost it's like your paintings are a promise to people, right? Like if you buy yeah. it, you're going to like it. Yeah, and I also when I wrap it, yeah. I, I put like I add a Bible verse to it. Oh, yeah. so that's kind of like your tagline. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And again, how do you pick your Bible verse? Is it depending how you feel? What comes yeah, from? how I feel and who I'm giving it to, like, you know. Oh, yeah. so it's, it's more personalized at yeah. that point. I like that. Yeah. That's a genius idea. And do you do your trademark also at the corner anywhere or do you sing? Oh yeah, on the paintings, yes. So how mandatory is it for an artist to put, you know, their signature or their label on their product or their or, or their You have to. It does it doesn't look finished if you don't. <laughs> I like that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> right? It doesn't look finished if you don't. And it looks professional once you add it. Yeah. It just looks like it's from a store. Okay. Yeah. So the next question I want to ask you now too is, is you know what are a couple of of your favorite paintings, and why are they your favorite? And I guess we can start okay. with this beautiful one right here, right? Okay, yeah. Awesome. So I just want to show the viewers because this is phenomenal, okay. right? Beautiful. The detail, right? So talk a little bit about this one. Okay. So. She is melanin, mm -hmm. um, and I think I named her that because she has different skin tones within her. So she's like multiple different skin tones. Yeah, and I just love her. I just yeah. love her body. And and this is what your this is the framing that your your pops creates. Yeah, he made that framing. Yeah, really nice, right? And this is the good quality that people are getting if they are purchasing. Yeah, your 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 creations, right? And right. quality is a big thing for people, especially when it comes to painting, because yeah. a painting will last for pretty much however long you kind of want it to. Yes, depending on, like, you know, what materials you use to cure it. Mm. So what are some materials that could kind of make it go that that mile? Epoxy resin. Epoxy. Yeah. And what else? Oh, it's epoxy resin together. Oh, it's to get the compound yeah. word? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. because you have to use A and B. Yes. you got to mix it together. It's both liquids. Okay. Yeah. So that's beautiful. So so now I want to kind of transition, right? Because we have viewers that are looking on, right? I'm sure they're going to be admiring your paintings. But the other side that they're probably going to wonder is, what's that business world like? Right? Because from what we're understanding, the, the era that we're heading into, right? Everything is attached to business. Yeah. Everything. Whatever you create, whatever you put out there, there's a business side to it. So in the painting field, what does that business side kind of look like? If you can give us anything around that. Okay, so... Um it is challenging because how I do it, like I used to make my brother manage my social medias, mm. but then I just took it over because he's just in, he's in school. Okay. So, uh, so what I have to do is like, you have to like create paintings. Plus you need to take pictures of paintings and put it on Etsy, right? Wow. So it's like a different process. Plus you gotta, you know, fill in every like description and you have to like sell your painting, right? Like, why should I buy it? Yeah. You know, and the picture taking, you know, you got to get the right lighting and everything. Yes. So it could be challenging, right? So recently I have been updating my Etsy and making sure like I have new paintings on there. Um, but right, so like I wish, not wish, but like um, I would love, I never got a sale on there yet. Yeah. Yes. Not but yet. Not yet. It's coming though. Yeah, of course, of course. 
but I would get lots of sales from farmers markets. Mm. Yeah. So I was gonna even ask about that. Like, what's the work ethic like putting the painting out there? And what was it like being at farmers markets? So it's a two point question. What's okay. it like putting the painting out there? And what was your experience like being at the farmers market? Okay, so. I, so ad, advertising my painting is like no problem because I have different social media platforms. Mm. I have um, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. They all go under at SM Black Art. Mm. So those are like no problem because I know how like I'm managing those properly. Um, and my mom helps. She tells the whole world about my painting, especially on Biggest WhatsApp. Biggest supporter, number one cheerleader. I like that. <laughs> Um, and the second question, farmer's market, it was, it was good, to be honest, it was really good, mm -hmm. um, it was just challenging setting up, yeah. because, you know, there's different weathers, weather temperatures, right, and, like, if it's raining, obviously, you don't want your paintings out in the rain, yeah, and, um, but my mom would always help me bring all the paintings out even like during those times some of the paintings got ruined too like the wind oh blew. Yeah. Get, the weather gets the best of yeah 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 but people were really nice and i got lots of sales from farmers market so what was the one biggest thing that you learned about going out to farmers market and having the, 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 to push some paintings i meant like um you know meeting the community because, mm. you know, after, like, you know, it's actually good that we went to the farmer's market because we met, like, the council for the Innisville, and, like, he helped out so much. You met the council of Innisville? Yeah, yeah. Whoa. And then he had so much connections, and we were in different business, um, business meetings and everything. Yeah. So, like, they really helped. And even I was able to, like, you know, donate my paintings to different... Um, oh, that's so yeah. thoughtful. Yeah, within the community. So it was really good. Yeah, that's really thoughtful. We right? met, like, other people, too. Even, like, when we had... We had an event um, where I sh showcased my paintings. I had it under, like, a tent in a park. Yeah. And people actually came by, and it was really nice. And, like, that's where you meet people, and, like, because... Innisfil a small community. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows everybody. So you know? bad news travels fast. Yeah. <laughs> or, and in this case, good news travels fast too. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody was really friendly and welcoming. Yes. That's so nice. And again, you're going back to the community, but that's the groundwork, right? Yeah. And think about how many of the, the competition you beat, those who are just staying online, right? Versus you now doing the legwork, going outside when it's raining, having your mom help you load them. <laughs> And unload, right? That whole process. And, and you found through that that the biggest part is just connecting with the community. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. And that's really what the Wave Show is about, right? Connecting with the community, creating that bridge, and, and you know, and, and allowing people to, to, to showcase their talent. So, Shinoi, here's what I want to ask you, right? Because we understand with appraisals, right? It's a big thing in, in the painting industry. Can you give us a little bit of idea of what are appraisals and how they work? Okay, so appraisals is based on the value of the painting. Okay. Okay, so I guess it depends on, you know, obviously the size of the painting. Yeah. Even depends on the canvas because there are certain type of different canvases. Mm. There's stretch canvas and then there's like the board canvas. So the stretch canvas is when it kind of gives like a 3D look. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's kind of like protruding out of the wall. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I yeah. Okay. The, the, the 3D feel, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then the regular ones, it's like, it just has like, it's not really, it's just a board. Mm. Like, you know, it's just a panel and the canvas paper is just over it. And also depends like on what materials you use. Um, and also the painting as mm. well. And, and like you said, it's the idea of, of having a painting, saying it's valued at $150, you know, 10 years later, mm -hmm. It might be at a thousand, right? And, and and that's how the appraisal part of it works, right? Okay, so that's genius. That means a painting can have a lifetime value. Yeah. Right. Even if we look at that 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 famous one by Monroe, was it um, mm. Lisa? Oh, uh, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, oh. right? That's stood the test of time, and right, it's 
<laughs> Why do you guys do that? <laughs> I know I bagged you over there. <laughs> She's like, who? <laughs> All right, Mona Lisa. Yeah, okay, okay so talk, talk a little bit about this one and, and tell us what they're called. Okay, so this one, she's called Corona. Okay. Um, I made it, I think I made it last summer. Mm -hmm. And nice. I just thought she was beautiful. I, like, I knew, like, the, obviously the pandemic is going on, but, like, mm -hmm. I wanted to, like, make her a person. Mm. And then, uh, like, you know, you see the mask, right? Yes. But, yeah, she's Corona. So I think she's so pretty. So you kind of wanted to like, like personify her almost. Yeah. Right? So then there's Corona. Um, I know the other one that we have here. Right? Yeah. This one's called Light. Mm. And I guess I, I guess because um, the concept of the candle is because life just goes by so fast. Whoa. Yeah. And then you have like, you know, the candle dripping. I, I heard a good quote by that. They say life is, is, is like a candle, right? I never heard that before. Yeah, is that what they say? Yeah, so I think her name was Bar Barbara Stripes in a song. She talks about that. Oh, that's cool. Right, so that's genius. And that's why you have the background is is like going really fast. Mm. Yeah. And how, how what inspired you to create this one? I don't know. I just it just came to life. Yeah, I just love it. I love that. Mm. And now the last one that we want to take a look at, right? This is a really beautiful painting. Also, the detail behind it. Can you tell us a little bit about this one also and what's it called? So, um, my dad told me, you should watch Bob Ross. And I was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> so, he's like, yeah, I watch it. So, I watched the video and I was like, because I always wanted to know how they did trees. Because I didn't mm. understand. But it's the way you would use the brush on a palette. So, if you're doing bushes, yeah, you would... Put the brush down but like you drag it down so now the brush is the bristles are more open oh yeah so if you're making uh okay so you know the palm not the palm trees you know the pine trees yeah right so if you're making that right and the pine the way of the leaves go right you would take the brush and you want it to be pointed right so you don't want the brush to be open right. so you take the brush you rub it on the palette and you you just go in a in a direction Dang. right so then when you do that now all the brushes sorry all the bristles are together yeah right so when you get that you just take the corner of the brush and then you go over it each side so this one was almost like a test for you yeah because i didn't know and he was going so quick <laughs> i had to pause the video 500 times because i didn't but like and then okay so wait this part yeah this will be water right and you see how the water is like splashing mm -hmm. you use a fan brush a fan brush, yeah. and that's what gets it like that. Yeah, so the fan brush is open bristles. So um, it's not like a typical brush. Yeah. It's really like a fan. It's open. Okay. Yeah. This is cool, right? This is really, and this was inspired partially by your dad. Yeah, because he told me to watch Bob Ross. Right. Yeah. So if, if we're looking at these paintings, right, where can people find more of them? How can people get more access to them? You know, what, what can they do? Okay, so they can visit me on Etsy. And um, I have, like, I will show my process on YouTube or TikTok and Instagram. I usually post my pictures on Instagram. Mm. And it's all under at SM Black Art. Beautiful. Yes. I love it. Right? I really want to thank you, Shinoi, for coming out, sharing your painting with our viewers, giving us different ideas around the painting industry, also around, you know, different skills around painting. So thank you again for coming thank out. You. Can't thank you enough. Is there anything else that you want to share with our viewers before we end? Yes. Um, I love this Bible verse. It's Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. And that really pushes me. Like that's, because I know Bible verses are really long, you know, and, and some people are <laughs> memorizing them. Like that's the one that I could say fluently and yeah. I remember. And yeah. it, it, it evokes the emotion. Yeah. So a lot of times when you're probably in a dark place while painting, just by saying that quote, can bring you back to life. Yeah. Nice, nice. So what I want to do now is I want to thank our viewers for tuning in. Thank you guys for always showing love. We really appreciate that. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You don't want to miss out what we have in store. And please remember, stay wavy. Come to the wave show. Come to the wave show.